And we are on. This is the great classic movie debate. We are the sister channel of the great classic rock debate. Some might even say the, the twisted, twisted sister. 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 Yeah, that's right. Uh, that's we'll take right. any one of those. We, uh, we talk movies. They don't have to necessarily be classic movies. They can be any movies, current, uh, the old classics, whatever. We like them all. Uh, as long as the discussion is interesting, we try to keep it interesting. So uh, I'm Kenny. I'm Paul. I'm Steve. Yep. And let's, and let's do that. Now, you guys have both, I assume, uh, seen and are geared up to uh, talk John Wick. Is that right? Yeah. Uh, yes. Okay, because I haven't really, I haven't seen it. I've only seen the first one. I haven't seen the other well, this, series, and I haven't had a chance to. Um, it's however, to, yeah, go ahead. It's pointless to talk about it until you've seen it. So that way. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Well, um, but it, I mean, if you guys want to discuss it, I'll just take a back seat and ask questions or whatever. But go ahead. I'm going to turn the light off behind me. Go ahead, Steve. Yeah, Paul and I were talking about this earlier. Um, we'll start off with John Wick, but. John Wick is one of those movies, the franchise reminds me of the franchises, the action franchises from the 80s, where it has lots of memorable movie moments in it. Okay. There are probably, at, for me, there's three, there are three tremendous action scenes in John Wick 4. Okay. And without spoiling, I, I, are we giving spoilers away here? But Might as well. Uh, it doesn't bother me. Point. Yeah. It doesn't bother okay. me. So there is a yeah, you scene. know what just Steve just always preface it with okay spoiler coming up so if you don't want to hear this please you know turn off the video or whatever yep. this is okay. all spoilers go ahead Steve well right. I won't give away too much here but there are three big action action sequences one they're they're in Paris uh, around the Arc de Triomphe and so in the in the roundabout there's a long probably ten which seems like a ten minute fight scene there. Um, there's another one that takes place in kind of an abandoned vacant building. And it is shot probably another 10 minute sequence where it's probably two continuous takes, uh, two shots, each one long continuous take each and shot from above. And he's just going room to room <laughs> doing uh close co close quarters combat with uh with a with an assault rifle or a shotgun that's got uh Keanu Reeves is. The name of the shells. Yeah, what's I, I, I forgot I'm supposed to look that up. I forgot to, what it's called, but uh and, and then kind of toward then close to the finale. Uh, there's a long stair stairwell <laughs> fight on about a two on 200 flights of steps. Oh wow! And, uh, yeah, it's, it's outside. It's not a stairwell. It's a staircase outside. Staircase, yeah, yeah, yeah okay. outside, yeah. Um, yeah, it, it, it's one of those movies that has those are the movie moments that uh, I think a lot of movies over the last probably 20, 25 years lack. Uh, right, just the memorable scenes. Okay, and, uh, now I, I, I watched a, a ten out of ten. The movie. Itself. Oh, awesome. I watched a five minute video probably two hours ago uh, on YouTube and it was a guy, just some dude giving his thoughts and opinions and doing a, like a brief little review. And he said it was the best of the series. Oh yeah. He, he thought it was better. He said, they're all good, but I thought this was the best. They, they keep like, you know, yeah, raising they, the bar. They, they raise the bar each one. And for me, this is probably, this might be the greatest action movie of all time. It's, oh, wow. It's, yeah. It's right. It's very. I don't know if Steve has seen the raid yet. Have I have seen not it? seen it, but I, I've seen clips of it. I, I know what you're talking about. Yeah, it is. It is. Uh, John Wick Four is. I'm going to call it a tie. You have to see it before we can talk. We can talk about that. Kitty, have you seen the raid? No, I don't think I've heard of it. This is Indonesian movie, and the stars is. I think he's Indonesian or he's Thai. He's a really good looking guy, and okay. he can. He's in real life. He kill. He can kill people. Like, he's a bad dude. Okay, so and, is it a, when you say it's an Indonesian movie, does it have English subtitles or? Yeah, so that, you can't. Yeah, yeah you have to because you okay. can. Um, and it, it has set pieces kind of like John Wick. It, they're in this giant tenement slum, and there's like ten cops, and there's like five thousand bad guys, and it is just balls to the wall. Once it starts up, you're like, oh my god! And like you know, I worked peripherally in the industry. And I'm like, well, I'm not sure how they did that shot. And I'm not exactly sure how he did that shot, but it's just mind blowing. The because one thing Steve and I and some of our friends talked about before: when you shoot a movie outside the United States, someone gets killed. Ah, oh well, someone gets their head blown off. Well, falls off the building. Yeah, you know that those things happen. Collateral <laughs> you know, damage. They don't have the rules like we have here, or maybe in right. France or England. So um, anyway, so so this John Wick Four 
uh, the scene where he, Steve's talking about um, in this building, you've seen Taxi Driver, right? Yeah. So the, you remember oh my the God, end yeah. when, he, when he goes back in the building and the camera's up on top when he's going to the room? Oh, this is, yeah. They took that from this, okay? okay. They got That's where they got the idea. But it makes that Taxi Driver dream look like yeah, and Mary Poppins. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And I forgot the name of the stuff. This is the third time I've forgotten. It's got phosphorus and magnesium in it. So when it hits you, it just blows you apart. Like it's explosive. Yeah, there's a fire ignition. It's pretty, it's pretty uh, violent. It's really okay. <laughs> yeah, it's right. it's really cool. <laughs> yeah. Right. And there's and probably it, about the body count and from that one scene alone is probably like a hundred. Oh wow. <laughs> A, okay, so is, it, is this one more violent than the previous three? Oh, they're all pretty yeah. violent, I guess. Yeah, and I would say because it's almost three hours long. That's probably. Oh, I didn't know that. Okay. Yeah, and it does not feel three hours. I mean, the first first couple are you know probably a hair under two hours, an hour forty five minutes. Right. Right. Um, but th this had a budget of about a hundred million, where I think the first one was like thirty forty million ish. Right. And each right. subsequent movie in the series feels bigger, um, but. Yeah, that's it. I remember when John Wick came out, they did. I think they did a poor job of marketing the movie. The yes. first, because then it came out, I just thought, no, this is just some average action movie with Keanu Reeves. I didn't right. see it in theaters. It wasn't really aggravate Steve. No, they definitely did a poor job marketing because I remember the trailers did not inspire me to want to see the movie. And yeah. I, I, Paul, I told you this. Uh, one of the guys I used to work with, uh, whose opinion I didn't value highly was talking about how good it was. And I'm like going, yeah, right. But then you used your famous phrase, just turn your brain off, open your eyes and take it in. You're going to love it. And man, it was good. It's really good. Yeah. It's because you get, it's one of those movies that gets the audience rooting for it. It's, you know, Steve, I was, I watched today. I watched the man with the golden gun today. Wow. And the thing I was telling Genevieve, that John Wick has a little bit of it, but the thing about those older Bond movies is a lot of comedy. Yes, Especially with him and Q, and it, it, with the, when they're going back and forth, and yeah. like there's scenes where Bond does something to the bat, like oh, when the two girls. Have you, you remember? Have you seen Man with the Golden Gun, Kenny? I know you've seen it, but a long oh, a time. long time ago. Yeah, they, they they go to this. They put Bond in this school in Bangkok, and they, all these karate guys are trying to beat him up. So he runs. He gets out. And there's like 30 guys running out, and then the his friend, who's a, a Asian man, CIA, he pulls into his car. These two little girls are wearing skirts and a schoolgirl outfit, and he and Bond says, "All right, let me take care of these guys." And the girls grab him and push him back, and they proceed to wipe out like 30 guys. Two girls just what what? And they're using kung fu and karate. They're just, just beat. And at the end, she like she takes a watermelon, smashes it over the guy's head. And then Bond just pushes the guy over, like you're no more threat to. It's just hilarious. It's like, and, and, and the the third John Wick movie, we're up there up in that store in New York City, and there's that whole knife and they're throwing the hatchets, and and that one guy's like, oh, and, and Wick from like forty feet away just goes, hits him in the head. The whole audience, wow. Steve was sitting next to me. We're all just howling. It's just oh, yeah. ridiculously funny. Those are the yeah the John Wick series are in the theaters. The, the audience is cheering, and I haven't been to a yeah. movie like that in a very, very long time. Very long and that time. Guy, right, in right. The third one, when he gets smashed and he gets kicked in in the face by that, or in the chest by the horse. Uh, he kicks the other guy in the chest. Uh, he, remember, he slaps the horse's ass. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. The horse <laughs> kicks. Yeah. Exactly. Oh my god! You know, because you I, never real people like us didn't grow up on farms. I had a dog grow a big Rottweiler, but you don't realize how dangerous horses and dogs can be. You don't realize it yeah. until you yeah. see this movie, John Wick 3, you're like, oh, my God. Yeah. You never – watch a video of somebody getting kicked by a horse because it happens. I, I, a lot. I go horseback riding about once a year out yeah. here, and I always make sure I always approach it from the front and never get behind it. So right. <laughs> I get kicked. Yeah, and you're like, oh, my God. Like, but, but, Paul, you but, brought up a, a, yeah. a point about the Bond movies, especially Roger Moore. Like – Roger Moore Bond movies would not fly with the younger audience of today. Of course not. I mean, he's got, was it, is it Brick Eklund who's playing Good Night in the movie? I think it is. It's super, super hot. And it's got Maude Adams, who's, no, all kidding aside, top five woman who ever walked the earth in beauty. 
just stunningly beautiful. Okay, hold on. Quick question. Yeah. Did you guys, either one of you or both, see the original, not one of the many remakes, the original The Wicker Man? Yes. Is that... It is, Steve, you will love it. I, I recommend you watch it tonight. Is, is it is that Britt Eklund or Elkie Summer? Eklund. She's breathtaking. Oh, my oh God. Oh, my God. But like, that Steve. movie? Yeah. Oh, my God. The terror. I, I, I mean, it, it does it psychologically. It's There's no special effects or anything. Oh, my God. It's, it is, Steve. I can't believe you ever seen You know the bad All right, can you tell him who the bad guy is in the movie? Christopher Lee. Yeah, just like a bad guy oh. and a man with a golden gun. Yeah. Oh, right, right. Does he have so, four nipples in that movie? No, but <laughs> in, would you say three? Well, in the Brett Eklund, I couldn't believe. I was like, hold it, what? I was like speechless. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And and the way they set this thing up and bring you along, and genius. something doesn't feel right, but you're not sure what's going on, and when it hits you. Oh my God! It's the, like the worst feeling of horror. Steve, I can't believe, uh, dude, because they they made that Nicolas Cage thing, and I, I was gonna say, yeah. I think I was put off by that movie. I never, I never saw that one either. So I, I heard from people that you know I didn't value their opinion out in L.A. and I'm like, nah, I don't know. And I had not yet seen the original, and at some point, like maybe 2010 or 11, I saw it. Yeah, and I was speechless. Yeah, it's really. I mean. For that type of movie, it doesn't get any better. That's as good as and it gets. Kenny, you said something that was genius. No CGI. Right. They should pass a rule. Like uh, in, in Man with a Golden Gun, they have to jump across the canal and the bridges are warped. And he takes a listen to AMC. I think it's a javelin, if I'm not mistaken. Or it's not a pacer and it's not the other one. They're not a gremlin, but it's a javelin. And he jumps that car and it twists in the air and lands. And they did that stunt in real life. Really? No one. But yeah, they had like 20 divers in the, in the. you can't see them. They were diving, they were under the water so that in case Roger or the stunt driver got killed or ended, they would go get him. Right. Well, that's, right. that's why the Bond movies from up until probably the last 15 years have been so awesome because those were all real stunts. I mean, think about Goldeneye, the opening scene where uh, Pierce Brosnan jumps off the side of the mountain, skydives into the plane. Now you watch oh. it, you're like, there, there's no way. But they actually did that when, in real life when they filmed it. They did it really. Two, yeah, they do. They do did two setups. They did a separate setup of the of the car or the plane uh, taking off and him running and uh, and jump sky jumping off the the edge of the mountain. And wow. then for him to skydive wow. into the actual uh, plane, they they hoisted him from a helicopter, and so the stuntman jumped down from a helicopter into the plane. So, oh wow, yeah, it's, it's incredible. Yeah, that's why the old Bond movies are are far superior to anything they're doing now. So, yeah, yeah, you couldn't make those movies now because there's a lot of funny, like the club where he goes in, in Macau is called, or is it Hong Kong? It's called Bottoms Up, and the girls are on a table and they've got their butt in the air with a bikini right. thong, and they serve you with no top on. You're like, yes, more of that, please. <laughs> right, yeah. and right. Then, forget what the. He, don't forget what they did at the end of the man with the golden gun with uh, Herve Villachez. Oh, yeah. it, it puts them in, it stuffs them in a the thing, right? They hoist them up, yeah, to the top of the, uh, uh, to the top of the uh, ship. Yeah, you know, that's the kind of stuff that. Yeah, no. Now <clears throat> nowadays, you're you're hate filled <clears throat> if you even think of things like that. <laughs> comedy is <laughs> com comedy's over. Yeah. yeah. And you contrast that with today. I also watched the ending. I watched AI today. That's a damn, damn good movie. But that movie could not have been made without, or not, in my opinion, not well without CGI. Okay. So CGI you know, we saw that. Place. Paul, yeah. you and I saw that uh, at the movie theater, like way back when. And it had, it, it had trouble keeping my attention. It, it got mid movie and I didn't know it was aimless. I didn't know where it was going. And I really struggled with it. it I I watch it now. It's a hundred times better today okay. than when I saw it before. It you remember part of what I you have to remember is Kubrick got. I don't know how far he got in his treatment or script with it. I don't know how far. And then he yeah, died. He tried to make that movie for about twenty years. Yeah, but he, there's no way he could have made it in the seventies or eighties. In my opinion, right? Would have looked like garbage. Right. And, and the CGI in that movie is tremendous. And the thing with the mom, and, and again, like you said, like you're looking at with. Oh, I have two daughters. 
So now they see the boy longing for his mom, and um, it's really, I think it's brilliant. I, I just think it's brilliant, okay? I just my opinion. And uh, I think it's, I, you know, Schindler's List is really good. I mean, I, that could be Spielberg's best movie, in my opinion. But, yeah, it's real good. I was, uh, Steve? Was a, AI was a ripoff of Daryl. Is another uh, like, yeah, it's a hundred times yeah, hundred times sure better. I never sure saw it. Better. Yeah, it's a kind of a cheesy '80s movie about a. Yeah, but like you said, if, if, if uh, Kubrick was working on it for twenty years, I worked on a movie at UCLA where the girl, where these, where the kids take over the world. I can get into it now. And there was a girl in there. She was like fourteen. She was a redneck from Tennessee, and she was good with the bow and arrow. She never missed. And then that same year, that garbage, uh, you know, Hunger uh, Games. Thank you came out and I went, now I can't, I have to like rewrite that character because this garbage came out. I mean, if, if the three of us took a dump at the same time as someone videotaped it, it would be better than that stupid ass movie. It's just like pure turd sandwich. Well, it was an all American bestselling novel before it became a movie. Bob. Right. <laughs> it's just garbage. And then like the, you know, the, the stupid vampire movies and South Park destroy those vampire movies. Oh my god! <laughs> yeah. Have you, seen, have you seen the one where the Goss take on the vampires? It no, is, but literally. You know that I don't watch pants. South Park, but when you tell me pull this thing up on YouTube or whatever, I'll do it. No. Oh yeah, the Goss versus uh, the, the vampires. vampires. Okay. Yes. So the Goss has decided to take the head vampire, and they're gonna kill him. So they got him in the back of the truck, and they open the truck, and he goes, "Okay." So uh, you're a real vampire, right? So, uh, so uh, he goes, no, vampire. Like, what? You're not really a vampire? Like, no, he's not a vampire. It's just, oh, my God. It's just so brilliant. All right. I'm going to watch it. It was the episode where they, it was the goths versus the emo, emos. As well. Oh, that's that's later. But yeah, yeah, yeah. God, let's see what. <laughs> Dying. All right. So, Kitty. So, so the John Wick, yeah, it, it, it's... Yeah, like, problem with John Wick 4 is, like, I had to go to the bathroom twice because I'm old. So I had to race out, pee, and race back. I'm like, did I miss anything? Like, I might have missed a minute and a half of shooting, you know? So I, I Right. So I said, like, give us a five-minute piss break, or you go piss, you know, in the middle of the movie. Like, they used to do it in the 70s, right? They yeah, they do Overture. Movie. Overture, you know, and, like, uh, but, yeah, the John Wick, it's, the people, they have I mean, Clancy Brown's in it. I mean, it, it's oh, like, really? oh, really? Oh, yeah. Oh, and, hey, uh, hey, you guys, you, you know, you just raised some. So let me ask this question, because uh, over the last few days, I watched a number of, um, um, you know, biblical movies. I watched Ben-Hur and the Ten Commandments, and both of those start with the overture. So I don't get that. What exactly is the overture? And then they had the intermission also. What's I this overture? That, yeah, I think that goes back to the days, you know, the big theaters and uh, maybe a, a callback um, at a time when they had, like, orchestras in the actual theaters i think oh, that's okay. why they kind of did it back then okay um, well, it's, about, about, it's like about a five minute segment yep. right at the beginning and i'm wondering why did they include this and it just says overture and there's music playing gets, but there's nothing happening and they had an intermission you, as well it gets you into the mood what, what i had forgotten is star trek one the very first star trek movie has that at the beginning it's really like what what the hell is this crap? You start the movie. And it's like this thing, and then it starts up. But it, it gets you into the mood, I think. And Steve, I think Steve's also right. They think okay. when they have an orchestra and um yeah. So the last the last movie that I recall that had it was actually if you watch the director's cut of Kingdom of Heaven from Ridley Scott back in 2005. Okay. That that has an overture at the beginning of it. Really? Huh. Yeah. Okay. And it, it, oh, wow. that movie is one of my favorite movies of all time, the director's okay. cut. I don't. It I'm was not good. A fan of the theatrical cut, but the director's cut adds about forty-five minutes. Okay, has a lot more depth and story to it. Wow. And if, had they released that cut in in the theaters, that movie probably would have won a bunch of Academy Awards. Huh. Probably would have. Okay, that's good made. to know. Yes. And that's why you, Steve, you both of you've got to see the offer because that's exactly right. what Puzo and Coppola and Albert Ruddy were saying. This stupid ass at Paramount wanted to cut the Godfather down to two hours. And they're like, then there's no movie. It's garbage. You gotta have the whole three hours in there. Right. It's a story, and you know, and and, and maybe uh, you know, I don't know really Scott, obviously, but 
you know, I don't know what happened. And, um, and that's one of the things that pisses me off about my education. And I took history in college too. Like, I don't know much about the crusades. I know about Charles Martel. I know like 12 or 13 crusades. I, you know, this back in, you know, in this movie, it's the only movie I can recall that goes into at least right. a small, tiny bit of history of the crusades. Right. And, you know, and, yeah, and I there don't was know some... of any other movie that's really about the crusades that, no, that's not either. like a, a overtly religious movie. Right. And, you know, it's like, uh, I don't know if it's because the Muslims get, got, might get mad, but actually, and see what I talked about this, there was a couple of Muslim leaders there who were actually pretty good guys. You know, they're like, just live in peace and we won't kill each other. And, they, you know, that guy died or was assassinated by another more militant Muslim or we invaded, you know, so it's like, it's just very strange. I pitched a movie in LA about the, the Israeli civil war and I got pretty people that, that said, oh, I love it, it'll never get made, don't even try. These people were Jewish. <laughs> right. Yeah. Well, the, the guys, nice Templars have historically, or probably over the last 25, 30 years, have not been very, sh have not been treated well as far as uh, from in Hollywood, I guess. You, you know, every show about the Knights Templar, it really portrays them in a bad light. And whether yes. or not that's historically accurate, I don't know. Right. Um, but that well, was the problem yeah. with in uh, Kingdom of Heaven, the Knights Templars kind of, uh, a few of them kind of screwed over any chance of of there being any peace between uh, the Muslims okay. and the Christians there. Yeah, it's uh, it's sad, you know, like you hear, and, and Steve, and maybe, you, you know, and you guys are smart, like, I don't know how much was written down and who wrote it down, but the people who, who want, right? The winners write history. So we don't sure. know. We were, I mean, if we had saw an event today, depending on who shot it, how they edited it, we would believe one side or the other. You know, this is why in Palestine, when there's an explosion, you know, they, they shoot 500 bombs over, and when they retaliate, they're right there with the, with the camera showing the retaliation of it, right? As the Israelis are back, guys, well, hold on. You shot 400 missiles at them, and they fired two back. And this is how you're going to, you know. Right. I mean, movies are powerful. This is why the Soviets, Battleship Potemkin. Have you ever seen this, Kenny? No, you've told me about it. you got to see it. It's... It's like an hour and ten minutes, maybe, Steve. Right? I can't remember. I don't remember. It's it's pretty long. I mean, it's for the history of it. It's really it's, one of the first yeah. movies that that was really about that used propaganda in the the technique montage. Of okay. Yeah, montage. That's the first the the style of Eisenstein, who's the greatest one of the greatest directors of all time. He made that movie. Okay, Sergei Eisenstein, right. and so but again, Steve's right. It's propaganda. And it shows this weird event that happened, but um, we're so, I just tell my daughters, we are so easily fooled. We are so easily tricked. Our eyes and our ears, that's why Obi-Wan says, don't trust your eyes, they can deceive you. Right. Right. Except put that back into Star Wars. <laughs> right. But uh, yeah, the John Wick is work going. I, I'm mad at myself. I went to, Kenny and I went to Auburn. So I went to the Auburn 8 day game yesterday and a torrential rain froze, almost froze it over my little <laughs> nine-year-old daughter. She braved it out. I was very Poor happy thing. with her. But uh, I could have spent that time watching John Wick in Alabama well, yesterday. I, I intend to see it again uh, in theaters. And uh, it's that good of a movie. It reminds okay. me of uh, the feeling I had as a kid watching Rambo, which I think is oh. one of the quintessential action series of all time oh, yeah rambo die hard and i i can't think of a terminator but that kind of they shot themselves on the foot with that as well yeah but, yeah uh, and i know you guys did an episode on stallone uh a week or so ago here's my yeah. favorite one. action star yeah so, <laughs> yeah yeah we could do more because yeah. the john wick what those all those series have in common are those famous movie moments and, uh, you know, you go back to First Blood. For me, it was, I remember seeing that as a kid. And uh, my cousin got one of, at the time after when that movie came out, those big, uh, the big knives that he had. Oh, we oh, knife, yeah. yeah. We would, we would all, I remember he came over to, because we had HBO. He wanted to come over so he could watch First Blood. So we all watched it. And uh, the big thing was when he, you know, it seems so tame now. When he took the bottom of the knife, he had that big cut in his arm. And he sewed himself up with, uh, right. With the with the, using the what was in the knife, so you know right. those are the little things that uh, 
don't really show up in, in movies nowadays, except for right. the John Wick series. You know, everything yeah. is, as Paul was saying, CGI, all the Marvel movies, all the Transformer movies, they all seem to run together. And it's yeah. just all big blur to me. I, there's nothing really memorable from those movies for me. Anyways. I agree. Totally agree. Yeah. Totally agree. Yes, yeah, you're right. It, it, we, one of us talked about this, the foreign movies. Okay, like um, just a movie. I'm just trying they since they don't have the CGI budget, that makes them work on the story and makes them work on the characters, right? And 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 so the CGI is such a crutch. Well, let's have this explosion. Let's have the meteorite hit the earth, and you're like, oh my god, you know. And and, and then like a Ger like these movies that come out of Germany and Italy and and Japan, that some of them do have CGI. It's really cool, um, but. Uh, well, here's a perfect example of, of what you're saying, Paul. What's the best Terminator movie in the series? The first one. Exactly. What had the, the lowest budget? First one. There you go. Exactly. Yeah. I was trying you to explain to my... Go ahead. No, I was going to say, I always wanted, at, when that first one came out, I, I wanted the sequels to really focus on what happens in the future. And they kind of yes. slowly started to get that way, but they just, they ruined yeah. it. Yeah. And the Terminator Salvation, I actually like the movie. Oh, I, like I do them. like it. I like the yeah, first no, four. A lot of people I, didn't like Terminator Three. I I enjoyed it. I I it was still felt like classic Arnold. Which yeah. have you seen? I can't remember the name of the movie, the Arnold movie with uh, where he plays a sheriff in like New Mexico. Is that with uh, Johnny Knoxville? Yeah, and Johnny Knoxville's in I it. Didn't see it. I didn't see oh, it. Man, it's good. I saw it. Uh, I I didn't see it in the theater, but he's got this uh, big forty four. Uh, caliber uh, handgun you know dirty hairy gun and it just blows people's heads off with it it's it's a pretty good movie it, i don't think they even marketed it i don't recall i think it was in a the theater for like two weeks i don't think i've heard of it at all no, I, I saw it i can't it. remember though but it's okay. a, it's a good action movie you know was, arnold yeah. is not believable as a new mexico sheriff but <laughs> <laughs> the austrian accent yeah. spanish yeah. accent seemed fake <laughs> yeah, but uh, it, it, it's a good movie. And, you know, it's a shame, like, you know, with John Wick 4, that that's really the only action franchise or action movies that, that come out nowadays. I, I yeah. can't think of another, you know, solid action movie. Um, you know, J Jason Statham, who he's okay. I, I don't have he's anything right. against him. He's a really um, good guy. Yeah. He seems like he's probably the biggest, uh, aside from Keanu Reeves, the biggest, act, you know, current modern day action star. And, yeah. you know, if if you check out the Expendables movies, I don't know if you guys have seen those. I saw yeah. a couple of them. Yeah. yeah, those are those are good. Those are callbacks to the '80s, and I just I wish Hollywood would produce more of these movies. But yeah, those are those are good movies, good examples of movies that don't try to be anything more than just what they are. Yeah, I I like that. There's nothing wrong with that. And both those Expendables, I because I worked at a company for a little while that that financed those new image or millennium films, and they're not studio system films. This is Israeli money, okay? And so they kind of lean get to the right, you know? So oh, yeah. that's why all are they... these actors are all right-leaning guys in, in, in these movies, right? So, well, that, um, that, you know, I was going to say, it's kind of reminiscent of the 80s when you had, what is it, Gollum Globus? Yeah. yeah. I think it was yeah. an Israeli company. Yes. They, they produced they made all Chuck the, Norris movies. Chuck Norris movies. Like yeah. Delta Force, that's one of my favorite movies. Yes! Exactly. Yes! <laughs> They just don't – every time I see John Wick, I say, damn it, they don't make movies like this anymore. And, yeah. I mean, John Wick is the only – I mean, they made four of them, but that's it. But you don't have right. series like that. It's I'm such a this. shame. Tom Cruise made a move, came out of retirement and made Top Gun Maverick, and it made like $175 trillion. <laughs> and Hollywood still doesn't get it, right? They still they're don't gonna, get it. Yeah. They're going to give out trans – this my journey to being trans and yeah. oh, i'm gonna you know you're like look i one of my favorite movies is priscilla Green in the desert i love it you know why they're just they're there themselves they're right. trying to put on a show they're not trying to convert anybody and they, they just want to be left alone right love that movie have you seen that movie kenny uh, a long time ago it's a very good movie love it okay all right guys we got our warning so let's go ahead and wrap up we're going to shift into our honorary oscar uh segment i'm gonna go first and because we mentioned her earlier i'm going with Britt eckland who deserves an honorary oscar 
for the wicker man and probably for anything else she was in also uh so that's mine mine is lance reddick uh the guy who played sharon in john wick four yeah. he died like passed away like, yeah and for those of you little trivia buffs sharon is also known as the fairy man that carries right. people over the rock sticks into hades steve right. well in the spirit of kenny I, I, i'm gonna go with eva green from Kingdom of Heaven and yes. also uh, Casino Royale. I think she is yes. the, the oh, best right, girl right. of all time. You looked, and, you looked at a movie and with her. There's also 300 Rise of the Empire, Rise of an Empire. That might be the her best work. Yeah, hey, Rise of the Empire. She had an empire rising on her chest. So check out those three movies, and especially the third one. If, if all right. Know. All right, good. Uh, okay, guys, and that's going to be a wrap for this week. This is the great classic movie debate. I'm Kenny. I'm Paul. I'm Steve. All right, thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. Laters. See ya.